Hey guys and welcome to the Top Table Wargaming YouTube video. This is a video which is something that I've not done before. Um, if any of you guys are on the Great Rich Hobbit League Facebook group you will be well aware of uh, the Scour and the Cheshire the tournament that I'm running coming in June. Um, and I've been frantically building boards, uh, custom boards for this tournament and I've been posting a lot of stuff on the group and things. Um, any of you guys who follow the Top Table Facebook page will also have had uh, snippets here and there of uh, the things that I've been doing. There's not as much gone on there because I'm going to be compiling a lot of footage and pictures and things into one big video um, when the tournament's done, uh, which is, is, is like I say, it's, it's com a compilation of everything, so all the work that's been going into the boards, the organising of the tournament, prizes and things like that. This video is um, a bit of a tutorial, you could call it, I suppose. Um, a lot of people asking, what kind of wood do we use? Uh, how do I build the boards? What the construction is? Things like that. And I've been replying individually to a lot of uh, messages. And um, it, it's I, I'm, I'm basically repeating myself over and over again, which is fine, it's not a problem. Um, but I get a lot of notifications and it takes me a good... 15-20 minutes to get through them all. Sometimes I'm typing the same thing over and over again. So what I thought I'd do is, it's not going to be a, like in-depth, I'm not going to go crazy with it. There's going to be snippets and step-by-step -step stages of how I build my boards. Now this isn't necessarily um, how to, this is how boards should be made, these are the materials that you should use. It's nothing like that. This is how I'm making them for my tournament. Um, one thing that I can say is um, I've managed to find a way of building them which is the most lightweight but the most robust and hard wearing uh, and things that are not these are not stationary boards these are not a board <coughs> excuse me that you're going to build and leave on a table and it's never going to move uh, these were built with the purpose of transportation you know getting them to and from the tournament um, I actually built a um, racking system just behind the camera there um, where I can, I can fit 10 boards uh, stacked one on top of each other and just pull them out and push them back in as I'm, you know, I want to use them. I'll probably keep that, it was a temporary thing, but I'll probably keep that in here for when I'm filming um, unless, you know, studio space becomes available. Excuse me, just had my tea. Um, and then I'll probably build something um, that can store a lot more boards than that in the studio space. I mean, that that's, that's the plan, that's the dream. Uh, myself and uh, GBHL James, James Clark of Hot Gates Gaming. I've, uh, we, we spoke about it a lot. Um, the back end of last year we, we, we sort of really decided to find an area that we could both share and use for different things for um, Top Table Wargaming channel, the GBHL channel and Hot Gates uh, Gaming channel. It didn't happen. Uh, James had a gorgeous little baby that came along so obviously that takes precedence. I got really busy at work so um, it wasn't anything in particular, um, it just sort of not happened. It, it will happen, we're both very determined for it to happen and get this uh, custom space to film in so the quality of the vi these videos etc will be a lot higher very soon. Um, so on with this video, what I'll do first, I'll go through some of the materials, I'll go through the early stages of the board um, and then you know, decorating the board, What just dependent on what your theme of the board is, um, will totally depend on you. Um, this isn't a copy me, do this board, that I mean, if you want to that's fine, but that's not what this is. This is just showing you how I go about putting my boards together, um, and basically yeah, that's it. So without further ado, um, let's go and have a look at the materials that we need to build a board. I'll see you in a minute. So guys, here we are. These are the materials that we're going to use. Um, we'll start off <coughs> the main base for your board. What you'll need is a sheet of MDF. Now I use 9mm MDF. Um, I know there's a lot of other board builders out there. Uh, it cropped up in a, a few uh, Facebook posts when I've been explaining to people what I use. Who um, consider 9mm to be too thin uh, and they go thicker. Which, if you were just using the MDF with no surround they would be completely correct but as soon as you put a framework around this um, and put your insulation board on it's perfectly fine um, it's half the weight of the 18mm for obvious reasons 
um, so it's easier to move around. Now I think I may have mentioned it in the intro, if you're going to use a board um, which is going to sit on your table and stay there, it's not going to you know, interchangeable with other boards, uh, you don't need to store it away or move it or anything, that's fine, go for the 18mm. But if you do need to move it around, that 18mm with everything on it is going to be very very heavy. Um, so that's why I use 9mm and I've not had a problem yet. And just to sort of give you an example, there was a couple of boards which I'd done this exact same technique for last year's uh, Scar in a Cheshire and I had no storage space for a couple of the boards. And they've been in my back garden, covered by a tarp uh, for nearly 12 months. The One of them did get slightly wet in the corner um, and it slightly warped the MDF underneath, uh, on the top, on the gaming part, you couldn't see anything. Uh, and when I say warped, I mean it was probably four or five mil, um, totally not noticeable. So I know for a fact that nine mil is suffice. Now, you surround, you have options here because I use what's called what we call, um, or I call, should I say, uh, three inch pencil round skirting or architrave. And basically, what it is. It's a piece of timber, um, which is a nice planed finish, um, and it's three inches tall um, by about half an inch deep, as you can see, and it has a top edge which is curved. It's probably your most basic skirting board that you can buy and the cheapest, and it looks bob on on the board. Uh, finish it off nicely. Again, you could go four inch, you could go five inch, you could go six inch, however deep you want your board to be, you can choose that. I choose this because it's kind of universal. Even when my any hills or terrain that is higher than three inch off the board, um, I still use the three inch pencil around. I just like the look of it and I just fill in the edges of whatever it is. I paint it black and it looks fine. So that's what I'll use to surround. You'll need four pieces um, of a minimum. Uh, if you get them cut, I, I do recommend when you stand that, get them pre-cut. If you get them cut to say, I don't know, 1250 to 1300, because all you need is the width of the board, which in this case is not 1200 like you think, it's 1220, um, plus the depth of your skirting because you'll have the overhang, um, which looks like about 12 mil. So if you get it cut at 1240, you're gonna, it's going to be slightly over and you can trim it down to suit once you get your sides on. And as far as materials goes, that's it your MDF and your skirting. Uh, what you're also going to need is some screws, uh, some nice uh, wood screws. I use, these are 70 mil. 60 mil would be fine. I mean you could use smaller if you wanted to, but I find because these go in quite deep, that's where the board gets its strength. You need a tape measure, a square, and you need a drill with a pilot bit on. Uh, this is a 4 mil pilot bit for these screws. These screws are 4.5s, so that will drill a 4 mil hole. The screw thread is 4.5 mil, so you get a nice grip on it. Um, do not, whatever you do, try and do this without drilling a pilot hole. Uh, I'm not going to go into the uh, whys or wherefores of it. It's just no point. You don't want to become a carpenter or a joiner. Just don't do it. All you'll end up doing is splitting and wrecking your wood, and you won't get the screw to go in straight into your MDF and end up protruding out the bottom or the top. Um, you also need a driver. I use an impact driver just because... My, in my job, I have them, um, but any screwdriver, electric screwdriver, even a hand screwdriver you wanted, you could use. And that is the materials that we're going to use to put the board together. Okay, so what you're going to do, uh, first off, you're going to get your, um, your 3x1 pencil round. You're going to offer it up to your board, you're going to get it flush at one end, and then you're going to mark this end, and then you're going to add 15mm, 20mm, 10mm, whatever the thickness of the skirting is that you're going to use. Um, and you can cut that dead on now, or what you can do if you're not so confident in cutting is actually add a little bit more. So if you add yourself about 20mm uh, and cut that off, you know that you, you're not too small. If you cut it too small, you need a new piece. If you cut it too big, you've just got to trim it down. So always measure twice and cut once. Like I say, if you're not so confident, cut it slightly over. Um, and what you can do is when you offer up, your uh, other side piece which runs adjacent then you can trim that off to the perfect size so I've got this with a, a major overhang at this end so just ignore that at the moment um, all you're going to do is we want at least four screws down the side preferably five but if you're going to go with four 
you want them evenly spaced. Um, so you're talking, I don't know, about 270, 280 mil apart. One at each end, probably 20 mil from the corner, and then two evenly in the middle. So your pilot hole, uh, like I have here and here, and at each end, and then you're going to offer that up to the side of your board, get it flush with your flush end, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pilot drill, you're going to go go back through your pilot holes um, nice and um, level and plumb and you're going to drill about 50-60mm into the MDF. Now what you need to be careful of here is that you do go in straight and you, your drill bit doesn't come out the top or the bottom. If it does, it's not the end of the world, um, you know, don't worry, uh, but preferably try and keep it in. If, if, if one does go out the bottom or out the top, if it goes out the bottom you'll have to take it out and redo it because you don't want to catch your fingers on it. If it comes out the top plain surface side, it's fine because you're going to cover it with the foam. Uh, just try and make sure that if you do that with one, the rest of the screws in that side are straight into the MDF and the MDF only. Um, so I'll do that off camera and then we'll come back. Okay guys, as you can see, uh, this upright is now attached to the board um, with the pilot holes. Uh, but all I did was go into the MDF like I said and then drilled the screws in and that's nice and sturdy. What will totally uh, solidify that up um, a lot more is when you put your returns on. So this is the next piece, again, sl cut slightly longer so it overhangs at that end. I know it's cut nice and square at this end because I used a square to cut it. I'm going to butt that up so it's flush at the top here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where the centre is. I'm going to draw two pilot holes in this side and fix these two boards together. Then what I'll do, I'll again, like I've done before, pilot hole four or five um, screws through the upright into the MDF, put the screws in to um, finish that off, and I'm going to do that now on all the other sides. And as I'm going, so you've got this overhang here, what I'll do is I'll mark this off and use a hand saw, coping saw, jigsaw, cut that off and wrap sand uh, the edge round so I've got a nice finish. You can mitre these, but to be honest, um, this butt joint on this screw together is going to be stronger than a mitre joint. A mitre joint will look a lot neater, but a butt joint screwed together will be neater. What we're going to do at the end also is go around all the joints with a wood glue and that will just solidify everything. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these overhangs off, screw the other four, uh, so the, the other three sides on, and then we'll come back. So, um, all four corners, all four uprights are all on the board. I've got the base uh, done. It took probably all in all about 15 minutes, but I'm used to using power tools, so you know, just go at your own pace. Um, as long as you take your time, make sure your measurements are okay, uh, and you're drilling your pilot holes in nice and straight, you shouldn't have any problems. Um, as you can see, I've just took the edge off these corners to follow the, the line of the pencil round arc. I use a jigsaw for that, you can use a coping saw or a hobby saw or anything like that. I will then finish it off with a sanding block and all you're doing is just taking any rough edges and finishing that off. Yeah. So you'll do that on all four corners and that is pretty much your board uh, put together. It's nice and sturdy, um, you're not going to have any issues with that whatsoever as long as you get a good number of screws in each side. Minimum of four, preferably five, and then two screwing the corners of the upstands together, um, and that's it. Happy days, you're laughing. As far as putting it together, that's it. That's done. You can put in here what you want. You could have that as your plane surface, put a, a grass mat down, a, a mouse mat down in there, and away you go with your sort of uh, hills and trees, etc. I am building. Uh, custom boards. So what I'll do, just as a little bit of an extra to the video, I'll give you an insight and show you exactly what I do. So I'll go and get the other material which I will use um, for the base in here and we'll come back in a second. Okay guys, so this is what I will be uh, having as a, a base for the board. Uh, it's Styrodo or Styrofoam, uh, insulating foam, it's got lots and lots of names. The Styrodor uh, 3000 
Um, I've been used, well I used on a job at work probably about six months ago and uh, we over ordered, um, well I say I, I, we over ordered, the customer over ordered um, and we had loads of this stuff left over um, and it's been perfect, it's one of the, the best foams that I've used for modelling um, it, the, the blue, I use a lot of blue foam as well, this is a lot more dense um, and I just think you get a better finish on it this is really good um, if you can get this, great. You don't have to use this. This comes in sheets of 600 by 1200. Um, so it fits perfectly one together and it's rebated so they do uh, fit together nicely. You do have a line which you'll have to fill after on the board. Um, and what I do, I stick it down with deck cork, easy deck, uh, decorator's cork, whatever you want to use. Um, it's a good adhesive. Uh, and it sets uh, solid, but it also has a little bit of flex to it. So, you know, moving the boards and around the stuff, it's not going to crack, it's not going to split and just come away. It will give a little bit. So, it's perfect for this. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this down into the board um, and we'll come back in a second. Okay, guys, so as you can see, uh, I've put down the sheet. I've got a join here which I'll be using polyfill to fill, and I've got a nice foam. Uh, base to work from. I've still got a lip for dice rolls and such, the dice don't, ro dice don't roll off the edge of the table. Uh, that's not going to be the case all the way around because there's going to be hills and uh, you know different ups and downs on the board. But you know you can see that when you're playing so you're not going to roll the dice up a hill so it flies off the end you're going to roll it against a nice edge or somewhere around the middle of the board. And as you can see because of the, the rebates in the board I have this channel all the way down one side, uh, which is a hole which I can fit in. I need that filling and I want it to finish flush, so what I'm going to use is some expanding foam. You have to be very careful with this. Um, yeah, you've got to remember it expands, so you don't want to fill the hole. There we go. Now, at work, I use this stuff in, we have an applicator gun, um, which you can control a lot easier. I, just, I use this stuff for hobbying because I get it at work and it's very, I can get it very cheap. Uh, we get boxes and boxes of it and you know, it's the only way I find to use it. I won't use this uh, at work because you can't really control the flow. As you can see it's dripping out and stuff, which is fine. Once that sets, I'll have to pick it off. This channel that I've just filled, that will expand higher than the uh, styrofoam and all I'll do I'll get my uh, hobby knife I'll cut down take it off and it'll be a nice flush flat finish um, what I'm probably going to do is end the video there because I've shown you how to basically get your actual board together um, anything else is tutorials for making hills flocking gritting texturing filling things like that which I can do in extra videos so I'm going to I'm going to leave that there um, and I'll get back in front of the camera and can have a little chat. So there we go guys, that's basically how I put my boards together. Um, you can sort of add to that, I don't think you can make that any simpler but you can go further with it if you wanted to on the build itself, um, like adding more structure and, and sort of uh, braces and things like that but there's not really any point. That there will do you for whatever you need to do for your hobby board so you know get it done basically yeah it's dead easy there's no reason not to do it um like i said i didn't want to go too into too much detail i wanted to make it quite a quick short informative video i hope you that you've liked it i hope um it's answered a few questions for you if progressing on with the board is something that you'd like to see the process of or maybe see how i do it um like putting the hills on putting texture on adding details and things like that Make sure you comment in the video and I'll do it. Um, if, if, if I don't get comments, then obviously it's not something that you're interested in, I won't do it. Um, but if it is something that you want to see and you like to see tutorials on things, let me know. If you want to see how this board goes, you know, continuing on to the finish, because this is now ready for me to, to carry on with, um, let me know and I'll film it. I'll film the parts, I'll show you what I'm doing, I'll show you why I'm doing it uh, and how you can do it. Um, as long as you've got an, an area to work, I mean, we're coming into the summer months now, so, excuse me, we're coming into the summer months, so 
Um, you know, you can work outside in the garden, which is probably preferable, especially when you're working with foam, like cutting foam. Unless you're using a hot wire cutter, if you're using like a, um, a blade or a knife and you're carving, foam gets everywhere. Um, so either do it in your house and have a hoover handy and hoover as you go, um, or do it in the garden where you can sweep up and you know put it in the bin. So let me know what you think. Um, like I say, if you want to see more tutorials on the board rather than individual modular pieces, uh, make sure you comment. Let me know. If you let me know what you want, and I'll see what I can do, and I'll put some videos together. Um, and that's it, really. So make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. Keep on gaming, and take care. I'll see you soon.